Welcome to the CADFIM ANSYS tutorials. In this presentation I'd like to show you how to perform the calculations for a bolted assembly. We shall be using a flange assembly for this purpose and it will be loaded to see how it flexes. You can see it is fixed at the rear whereas at the front it has been subjected to a lateral force. We begin the analysis as ever using the ANSYS project manager. We import the geometry into the work area using drag and drop. We then link the static structural mechanical analysis to the geometry we've just imported and in this case, seeing as we're working with material that's already been defined, we go directly into definition of the model. We have access to the geometry in the mechanical editor and we can expand this geometry. We then recognize that we have an assembly consisting of various components. Contacts between these components are generated automatically depending on the distance between them. So let's take a somewhat closer look at the contact between a bolt and a flange. We notice that contacts are generated not only under the bolt head at the point of contact with the flange, but also between the bolt shaft and the through hole. That's not really what's wanted, so we set the contact recognition such that contacts are only generated where there are small gaps. For example, we can stipulate a gap of 0.01 millimetres one one hundredth of a millimeter and then we select this so the connections are regenerated. Using the newly generated connections that are now only between the bolt head and the flange without any contact between bolt head and through hole we are now in a good position to be able to perform the analysis. With this in mind we select the contact properties. We define these properties which are transmitted as forces. Bonded contact covers all types of forces, such as perfectly welded and glued component ends. Where we're dealing with this type of contact, where we want to take into account friction, and where we want to take into account the opening of the contact surfaces, we can define a contact that's subject to friction, together with the corresponding friction value. So far we've defined the contacts, and we can go on to definition of the loading condition. We want to take two steps in creating this loading condition. In the first step, it is the preload that will take effect. In the second, it is the external load and the flexural stress. So we go to the analysis settings, then we establish that we want to carry out two steps. And now we define the loading condition with respect to these two steps. The fixed support on the external end remains the same during both loading steps. So we just select the surface, define our fixed support, define the boundary condition, and we've now completed the support. The preload on the bolt is defined as follows. We hide one of the flanges, select the cylindrical surface of one of the bolts, and next under loads we define the bolt pretension. With bolt pretension we specify that the first loading step is to be set at 20 kN and in the second loading step the bolt is to be locked in place. Yet it is still preloaded, and the forces on these bolts change with the external load in the same way as in the real world. Now we want to replicate what we've just defined on all the remaining bolts. So having already selected bolt pretension, we can now copy the whole definition using the object generator. And so we've been able to take this definition of a large sized harbour bolt and copy it very quickly. Last but not least, we need the external load, so we reveal the other part of the object to which we want to apply a force, the flexural stress, i.e. the lateral force, here at the front, by defining a force at this point. This load is to be defined using a coordinate system, and it follows that the force is to take effect in x direction. However, at the moment it will be 2. For the present moment, not 1, which is where the pretension takes effect. Here we want to apply 20 kN in the x-axis. Just to check over everything, let's take another look. Number 1 currently looks like this. We're applying a 20 kN pretension to all the bolts. We've not applied any external force. Now let's go to point 2. Here we are at the second point in time. All the bolts are locked, i.e. they're still taut and we apply this force of 20 kN laterally. The rear end is fixed in place during both steps. In the next step, 
we specify what results we would like to see. So, for example, total deformation. And then we begin the analysis. Following the analysis, we take a look at the deformation, preferably from the front section. We cut a cross section through our components so we can obtain a better view of the internal aspect. And now we see our flange connection in cross section. On the right side is the support and on the left is the downward force. And we can now see that the flexion of the flange connection has to an extent opened the flange, whereas here at the bottom the components are lying next to each other. So here on the tensile side the flanges have become somewhat separated, which shows that the pretension is insufficient to prevent this gap, this separation or opening. We can see the whole thing better once a visual portrayal has been created following on from the calculation. We select the contact tool from the solution menu, select the corresponding contact surface and then select the contact pressure applied to this surface. Returning to the image, preferably without the cross section, we can now see the contact pressure under pretension with additional flexion. We start with the initial situation, i.e. just the pretension, and you can see that the contact zones and the contact pressure are very equally distributed around the bolts, which means that within the pressure cone around each respective bolt, we see where there is contact, where the components are tightly fitted to each other. And once the flexion has been applied, the contact situation changes, so the frontal part is pushed downwards, and the contact zone in the lower end spreads out, and here at the top, which is the tensile zone, it migrates outwards because the contact is levered away, which demonstrates that the bolt is not strong enough to guarantee contact between the two flanges across a large area. In the next presentation, we will be demonstrating how to evaluate a bolt of type VDI2230.